hold you up. This is a most exciting uh, day. As uh, many of you know, today is the Great American Smokeout Day, uh, and I've uh, had the wonderful opportunity to participate in a number of events uh, over uh, the past few years. Uh, but this one is uh, particularly uh, exciting, uh, and I'm joined by, of course, uh, Dr. Donald Schwartz, Deputy Mayor for Health and uh, Opportunity, as well as the Health Commissioner of the City of Philadelphia. He is not up here, but uh, Dr. Uh, Molly, pretty good, sir. always hiding over on the side, Director of Policy and Planning. I usually have to look for him uh, somewhere uh, of the uh, of the Health Department. Tracy Beard uh, from the Law Department and Sue McTamney uh, from uh, Recycling. And you're going to hear from them in a few minutes. I want to welcome you again to the City of Philadelphia's Great American Smokeout event celebrating the launch of Get Healthy Philly's X smokers Hall of Fame. Every year on the third Thursday of November, the American Cancer Society hosts the Great American Smokeout, a national day of encouragement for smokers to make a plan or take action to quit smoking. The Great American Smokeout is a reminder that quitting smoking is an important step toward a healthier lifestyle and will give former smokers years back of their lives. Great American Smokeout is a superb occasion to launch our new project, the Ex-Smokers Hall of Fame. The Ex-Smokers Hall of Fame celebrates the individual struggles of Philadelphians to quit and their ultimate triumph over smoking. The Ex-Smokers Hall of Fame showcases city employees who have successfully quit smoking and are sharing their stories with the hope of inspiring others to kick this very bad and deadly habit. When the health department staff began this project, they expected some people would want to share their stories. We did not expect to receive 50 or more responses in just a couple days. The stories of these employees have chronicled uh, through their written testimonials and video essays, and they're being shown with the hope that the public will view or read a personal story and then be motivated individually to make a lifestyle change as well. I want to say thank you to all of our public employees who are willing to share their stories. It is, I know, a difficult process that takes multiple chives and often years to achieve. I'm proud of all of you for quitting, and I know you are proud of what you've done as well, and I'm sure your family members feel the same. Smoking is a very serious public health issue in the city of Philadelphia. In 2010, Philadelphia had the highest smoking rate of the 10 largest cities in the United States of America. Over the last few years, however, we have seen a 15% decrease in smoking rates uh, for adults and a 10% decrease among young people. Smoking, is, smoking has also declined in the wealthy and low-income populations for African Americans, Hispanic or Latino population, Asians, and whites. In total, due in part, and I would say in due in great part, to the wonderful work of the health department Philadelphia has about 40,000 fewer smokers in the city today than in just a few years ago. Smoke-free Philadelphia has been a goal of mine since my days as a member of Philadelphia City Council. For six years, I pushed very hard for smoking prohibitions in bars and restaurants and workplaces under the Clean Indoor Worker Protection Law. We have finally succeeded. And now those restrictions have been expanded through an executive order that I signed a couple years ago to include parks, playgrounds, recreation centers, and swimming pools, which are now also smoke-free as well. We've paired public smoking restrictions with support for individuals who want to quit because research shows that people are twice as likely to quit for good if they get help in that quitting effort. We offer smoking cessation programs, including counseling sessions with quit coaches and free nicotine patches, gum, or lozenges for up to eight weeks to our citizens. If you are a current smoker or you're ready or you are in fact ready to quit or want to, you can call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. That's 1-800-784-8669 and you can get assistance by calling that number. The City of Philadelphia also offers insurance coverage for nicotine patches, gum, and lozenges to city employees and their dependents. And that's something that came as a result of uh, many discussions between myself and Dr. Schwartz, 
uh, and uh, human resources. It just made no sense to me, Dr. Uh, Malia as well, it just made no sense to me uh, that as a city government we would not be offering that particular benefit to our own public employees. Some of those individuals are likely here today, people who want to quit, celebrating in the accomplishments of city employees who are now members of the Ex-Smokers Hall of Fame. You can learn more about the Hall of Fame uh, at www.smokefreephilly.org. And now, I think we're going to play two short videos from our Hall of Famers. My name is Tracy Beard. I work for the City of Philadelphia in the Law Department. I started smoking over 30 years ago, and as a result, it became um, an addiction. I used to steal cigarettes as a child from my father's store, and when I used to get them so that I could have friends, and we used to go up to the park and hide behind a tree, all from my parents, and smoke. Um, we used to smoke cools and pale males at that time. Um, Later on in my life, I began to work um, in the health department. Working in the health department, I was able to meet new people. And I met a woman named Faith Simmons. She was in charge of a program that was um, entitled Quit Smoking. I asked her a lot of questions about why, how people can quit smoking, you know, without using the patches or whatnot. And she just gave me some new information. She said, you have to change the way you eat and you have to change your behavior and you have to not give up. So I applied those things to my life, and I applied them mainly around the time when I realized that my children had acquired asthma and smoking in the house was not healthy for them. Actually, it caused them to go into the hospital several times. So I had to do something different, and as a result of getting the new information, my faith in God, I began to change some of my behaviors. Later, one day on April the 23rd, I woke up, I had no desire to smoke. I truly believe it's because I had new information, because of my faith in God, and because I was willing not to give up this time. Because I've tried in the past many times before, as many of us have. But the key is change what you do, believe in something greater than you, and don't give up. Quit with help, quit for good. Call 1-800-784-8669. Hi, my name is Sue. I work for the City of Philadelphia. Um, I started smoking when I was 12 years old. I stole my first cigarette off my sister and smoked it, and I fell in love with the cigarettes. I smoked for 36 years. I smoked four packs a day the last 15 years of my smoking habit, and I, um, I just love to smoke. I wouldn't even get out of bed. I lit a cigarette, and before I went to bed at night, I had as many cigarettes as I could, and I would always wake up in the middle of the night with a, a need for another cigarette, so I always smoked. My husband was amazed how much I smoked. Um, I decided to quit when the cigarettes went up to $4 a pack. I started when they were 32 cents. So I said, that's enough for me. I made a decision. I made a date. I smoked all the way up to that date. I put them down and I never picked them up again. I never looked back. I prayed all the time and that worked for me. And um, I got diagnosed with lung cancer two years ago, two and a half years ago. And I'm um, clean now and because I didn't smoke. It didn't aggravate the situation and I didn't die. And my two sisters passed away with lung cancer and continued to smoke while they were being uh, in treatment. And uh, if you, sh you should quit because quitting really made me feel great. I'd go to the gym. I feel terrific today. I can breathe too. Quit with help. Quit for good. Call 1-800-784-8669. Two stars of those videos, uh, Tracy and Sue. Good morning. 
quit teen smoking. <coughs> Thank you. Quitting smoking is one of my greatest accomplishments. The idea that I can go through everyday life without using the resource of a cigarette, it, it amazes me. I am so grateful that I've lost the desire to um, smoke cigarette, cigarettes. And I believe as, as a result of um, learning new information, I am nervous. <laughs> I, you know, I just know, I am just sure that anybody can quit smoking. You just have to get new information. You have to be determined. And you have to just, you know, believe that you don't have to do it by yourself. I, I, I learned something with the smoking cessation program. I, I thank God that I started out in the health department because I met a woman. And she, I, I, I didn't have time to go to the smoking cessation program because it was during my work hours. But every chance I could get on my breaks, I was there getting um, answers to my questions. And she told me, you got to change your behaviors. So I changed when I smoked, how I smoked, where I smoked. And then um, I changed, um, I, I believed that I could do it. The main thing that motivated me about quitting smoking was my mother and my husband, who were my smoking partners, they quit smoking on me a year before. <laughs> And I, you know, I was really upset about that. I had nobody to bum a cigarette from, and I had nobody to smoke with. And that's what made me realize that smoking was hurting my children. And my children used to put on plays for me. I didn't understand it. And I said, you know what, do y'all love me? And they said, yeah. I said, well, just hold my, my oxygen tank for me. You love me. You know, because I knew that that's where I was going to end up. But then, I'm, I'm just positive that anybody quit smoking. The one thing they just have to, you don't have to do it alone. There are programs. The City of Philadelphia Health Department offers a smoking sensation program and the people that are committed to helping you stop and stay stopped. Determination. Don't give up. And faith that you don't have to do it alone. Thank you. My name is Sue McTammany. I'm an ex-smoker. Oh, excuse me. It's been eight years since I stopped smoking. Uh, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, and, and I didn't do it for any reason. Like, um, I was bothering my kid. I was a very ignorant smoker, okay? I didn't care who I annoyed. I lit up whenever, wherever I felt like lighting up, okay? So I was very ignorant, and I didn't care about anybody. Um, one day, I heard cigarettes were going up to $4 a pack, and I said, that's it. I'm done. And uh, I came home, I told my husband, I said, I'm quitting. And he's like, yeah, right, so. <laughs> and I said, I made a date, and I was serious this time. For the first time in my life, I felt like I was serious. And, and I, I smoked to death that whole week. I remember smoking to death. Uh, I didn't have enough cigarettes. I kept sending my husband out, I only have a pack left. And he would run out and get me cigarettes. And I did, I smoked. And even I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning the day before I was supposed to quit, and I smoked about eight cigarettes. And I went to bed, I got up the next morning, and I didn't touch them again. And I had no uh, inkling or, or cared to touch them again. I prayed, and that's what I used. I used a lot of prayer. And it got me through a lot of rough times. Uh, I just never looked back because, I mean, all the things and the damage that it did to my body, when it's inside, you don't see it, you know? When it's outside, you see it. And, and I didn't see it, and I got COPD. And I have to always be around with my little... Um, uh, what do you call it? Inhaler. I can't go anywhere without it. It takes me a half, about a half an hour to walk from 15th Street to the MSB building. Okay. I caught lung cancer, like I told you. Damaged my lungs even more. Okay. So smoking is definitely not a good thing. All right. And I thought all my life I would never get lung cancer and I would be okay. I was an athlete, right? I, I went to Rutgers University. I got a scholarship for volleyball. You know, I was, I was a, a heck of an athlete, but cigarettes took everything away from me. And I allowed it, you know. But today, you know, I look back, and eight years later, my kids are very proud of me because I haven't, I haven't picked up a cigarette or even thought about it. I do look around for them every once in a while. It's, you know, 36 years of smoking, that's a long time to smoke, right? So I'm still breaking the habit, okay? And it's still always going to be in the background. So the only thing I can't do is pick up that one cigarette that one time because I know I'll be off to the races if I do, you know. So if you smoke, quit. 
you know. If you gain a couple of pounds, this is what my doctor said to me. I'd much rather see a, a, a fat alive person than a skinny dead one. And, and, and that hit home and I was like, whoa, you know, he's brutally honest and you need a brutally honest doctor. And I have a lot of them, okay, because I smoked. But today my life is great. You know, I do an awful lot of things. I'm involved in an awful lot of things. And, and I love my life today, smoke free. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy and Susan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I want to acknowledge Dalton Paxman, who is our regional administrator for Health and Human Services, who's with us today and has been a tireless crusader for helping people stop smoking. So thank you for what you're doing as well. Let me join the mayor in congratulating all the city employees who have either quit smoking or who have quit smoking and those who have stepped forward to provide us with testimony. And in fact, for all those who are here who provided testimony, who are city workers, could you stand up? So their stories are in the Ex-Smokers Hall of Fame. It's at smokefreephilly.org, as the mayor said. And uh, the exhibit that you see around the room with placards like this will be circulating to public buildings around the city. They're currently at the Criminal Justice Center. They'll be, I hope, in City Hall. And the mayor and I are plotting where else they might go to influence the public. Because a key message in all this is that the city of Philadelphia is an employer, like many other employers in Philadelphia. And employers need to encourage and help their employees. And as you heard, people in the workplace are often the most powerful people to help folks figure out how to quit and stay quit, because we spend so much time during the day with our colleagues at work. So the more people in the workforce who understand what we heard about the harms of smoking and the more people who are there who can help others figure this out, the better. We think workplaces are a critical part of the resources that we have and need in Philadelphia to get people to stop. We still have 260,000 smokers in Philadelphia. So while we have 40,000 fewer, we have a very long way to go. If you see all the people who stood up today, the cumulative number of years of life that have been saved is enormous. And throughout Philadelphia, if we think of all the lives and years of life, life with partners, life with parents, life with children, life with grandchildren and great-grandchildren, all those lives will be saved and they'll be of higher quality if we encourage people to stop. So if you're a smoker, set a quit date, Consider using nicotine replacement therapy, although you don't have to. We have success stories both ways, but we've tried to make nicotine replacement more available. Talk to your health care provider, your loved ones, other people at work, and get rid of matches, get rid of ashtrays, get rid of lighters, get them out of the car, out of home, out of your workplace, everywhere. Make it so that your environment is a smoke-free and smoking free environment. If you have a family member or a coworker or a friend who smokes, encourage them to quit. We all need to be the people out there helping people and raising the issue of quitting. I am really proud that in the health commissioner's office, we no longer have anyone who smokes. And we didn't tell anybody they had to stop. We didn't threaten anybody they had to stop. We tried to create an environment where people could stop as we're doing with the rest of the city workforce. If you're an employer, a university, or a hospital, we ask you to make your entire campus, not just inside but outside, smoke-free. And we ask you to think about creating a smokers, ex-smokers hall of fame where every large employer, and even the small ones in Philadelphia, raise awareness that people can do this and be celebrated for having done it. Because as you've heard, it takes a long time for people to get there, and it requires a lot of reinforcement so that people stay stopped. 
If you're a business that sells cigarettes, we want you to be responsible. We want you to think about not selling. It is illegal to sell to youth. We want to make sure that people eliminate candy-flavored tobacco products, which we believe are particularly addicting for folks, decrease the visibility of marketing and sales. We think there are ways that we could make cigarettes less um, attractive to people by seeing them immediately, and change the products that are marketed. People are very brand sensitive. In general, we know that businesses don't have a high margin from selling tobacco, and therefore we think more businesses in Philadelphia could give up selling tobacco completely. For healthcare providers, doctors, nurses, and others, we hope everyone will mention to people at every visit that they should get people to quit smoking, ask people if they smoke, ask people if family members smoke, and get them to quit. So, I want to thank everybody who's here for coming and supporting our wonderful city workforce, and particularly those who have had the strength to stop smoking. And let's come back next year with double or triple the number of our colleagues who are no longer smokers. Thank you all very much. Lastly, let me just say that um, um, one, uh, Tracy and Sue, Sue and Tracy, um, congratulations. Uh, we're very proud of you and all the folks who stood up. I want to be sure that uh, I would love to have the opportunity to, uh, to take a photo uh, with each of you uh, and, uh, and the group. Uh, we're going to get these uh, stories up uh, on uh, the city's website. I'm sure the health department will as well, but I want, uh, at least in that scrolling uh, piece on the front page of the city's website, um, I'm sharing this with you. I'm really delivering a message to some other folks who actually uh, do this. They're, they're hearing this now. So uh, we're going to get that up on, the, uh, up on the city's website as well as on uh, channel 64 uh, and uh, seek some other ways uh, to, uh, to get information out. We've done some other public service announcements in places uh, where uh, people are kind of gathered, uh, have a bit of a captive audience, say, uh, for instance, across the street. Uh, at the uh, CJC uh, when folks go to jury duty. Uh, we've done some things with recycling uh, messages and uh, we want to uh, try to do the same uh, with, uh, with this. Um, I think that, um, you know, I mentioned earlier the fight to make Philadelphia a smoke-free city and I've uh, had an opportunity both as a member of city council and as mayor to work on some pretty important things. Uh, I've said this before and Actually, folks were a little surprised. Uh, once I was asked, what do you think the, one of the best things you've ever done? Uh, and my response was uh, that uh, uh, the work on making Philadelphia a smoke-free city. I'm not a police officer. I'm not a firefighter. I don't get to save people's lives uh, every day. But in that one instance, in that six-year fight, I know that there are some people who are living a better quality of life and some folks who are actually alive today as a result of that fight. And what happened? Only good things. All the doom and gloom that people talked about, oh, the bar and restaurant industry is going to collapse and folks are going to lose their jobs, and uh, all of it uh, was complete fiction. A, uh, people stopped. B, business has increased in all those places. C, I certainly can say here today, I go to a bunch of places today that I would have never gone to uh, in the past uh, because of the environment. Uh, and when you think about the people who work, uh, in many of those uh, locales, that they literally had to risk their life every day uh, just to hold down uh, their job. We know now from the research, of course, everyone, I think, pretty much agrees that smoking is bad for you, and most people agree uh, that uh, second-hand uh, smoke uh, is also bad for you, and now uh, the science is talking about third-hand uh, smoke. That's the residue. Uh, in your skin, in your clothes, in your hair. It doesn't go away. You can take as many showers as you want. Uh, some of that sticks with you. And that's what your children uh, and others uh, in your home, uh, in the workplace environment, I mean, you're just transferring it back and forth. It doesn't leave the carpet. It doesn't leave the drapes. It doesn't leave the furniture. It's there. Uh, and uh, it's also one of the reasons uh, why we see in many uh, instances in particular communities in Philadelphia still the very, very high incidence of uh, asthma attacks, respiratory, respiratory uh, distress, all of those issues stick with us. This is a nasty,
product. I understand that it's legal. Um, and, uh, you know, that's that side of the world. Just because it's legal doesn't mean uh, you have to engage in it. It is nasty. It is addictive. It is manipulative. Uh, and uh, the companies target particular populations with certain, uh, they, um, they manipulate the levels of nicotine and flavor and all this other kind of stuff going on. Uh, and you have to when you have a product that you know kills people because you need new customers. Uh, and so this targeting, notwithstanding the agreements that have all been made, uh, we know that children in particular are still targeted. We know that signage around uh, the city of Philadelphia, many of our stores, and we've had discussions about that from a zoning standpoint and the new zoning code seeking to address just the proliferation, the bombardment uh, of people, and especially kids walking down the street and seeing all these ads plastered or prices plastered all over uh, storefront windows. Uh, and it is a constant reminder uh, that we must be vigilant. We must support uh, our employees and all of our citizens uh, in, uh, in this way. And as uh, Dr. Schwartz did, I want to call on all of our employers across the city. If you have two employees or 2,000, this is a very serious issue. It uh, affects absenteeism. It affects productivity. It affects people's health. It drives up health care costs. All of these issues can be addressed, and it is something that can be overcome. And certainly, uh, to the extent that we can support our public employees and citizens across uh, Philadelphia, it will be one of the best things that you, we, any of us will ever do uh, in our respective uh, careers and lives. And so uh, we want to keep this push going forward. Uh, thank the American Cancer Society and all the folks that I had a wonderful opportunity to work with a bunch of years ago. Our work is not done. It may never be done. Uh, and 40,000 uh, person reduction, that's fantastic. We celebrate that for about five minutes. There's still 200,000 people across this great city who are addicted to one of the most negative and deadly products ever made uh, in the United States, if not the world. And so I want to celebrate with you. I want to encourage you. And all I can ask, notwithstanding uh, your videos, um, you know, be a bit of a missionary about this. Talk with people about it. Have that quiet conversation. I'm not saying that you, know, you take over the whole workplace or be that pain in the behind employee that uh, none of us are really like about whatever your thing is. But you know, the fact of the matter is, is that most people who smoke actually want to quit. Yes. They actually want to quit. The product has such a grip uh, on you and the, and the science uh, and, and, the, and the psychological aspects and the uh, chemicals and the hormones and you put all of that together. Uh, and you have something that really grabs a hold of someone. And even when they want to quit, they find it challenging. And so uh, that one-on-one -on -one kind of contact, I loved your story that your folks quit, quit on you, uh, <laughs> kind of left you hanging out out there. Um, you know, uh, all of that uh, really helps. That's, uh, that's the toughest of tough love. Uh, but they do love you, and they care about you. And uh, lastly, I would just ask, all of us have, whether it's your own or someone else's or nieces or nephews or whatever, um, if not for yourself, do it for the children of this city. They want you, they need you, and they need you to be around uh, for them. Uh, we, we know that all of us are going to meet that day, um, but it really is about the quality of life that we have while we're here. Uh, and uh, if, if you uh, infuse in them the idea that they should never start, that they should just never start, they won't. And in many instances, they'll figure out uh, that uh, it's just not something good for them. So you've heard enough from me about this. Uh, let us uh, take some photos with our superstars uh, who are here making life better here in the city of Philadelphia. Congratulations.